Welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and this week we're taking a look at Super Pinball Behind the Mask. Look, pinball is fun. There's no getting around that. I've got a lot of fond memories throwing orders into pinball machines at Pizza Hut and various other restaurants when I was a kid. Heck, my aunt and uncle even owned a pinball machine in their rec room, and I played it just about every time I visited them. So of course I'd love playing pinball games on the Super Nintendo, right? Eh, not really. While Super Pinball Behind the Mask is a game I've owned since I was a kid, it's not one I spent a lot of time on, and there's a few reasons for that. First off, the game only features three tables. Jolly Joker, Blackbeard and Iron Man, as well as Wizard. Each of them are themed after their names, and that's about all that's worth noting about them. See, all of the tables in Super Pinball Behind the Mask are incredibly similar, so even though the themes are different, they don't feel different from each other. That's due to this game using simpler pinball tables. As in, the kind of pinball tables that were around in the 70s and early 80s, not the late 80s and early 90s. That's a real bummer, since Super Pinball Behind the Mask didn't come out until 1994. Because of this, the tables in the game don't even come close to comparing to the pinball machines that were on the market at the time. And that's really the crux of the problem here. I understand that no SNES game is going to compare to the authentic pinball experience. It can't capture that feeling of standing at a physical machine hammering away at the flippers while the song you picked plays on the jukebox. But the least it could do is try to offer tables that at least match those that came out in the era it came out in. If it did that, then I could be more forgiving of it, but it doesn't. This isn't to say that Super Pinball Behind the Mask is all bad. The 3D graphics it uses work well, and I love that the slanted view puts the entire pinball table on the screen so it doesn't have to scroll back and forth chasing after the ball like many other Super Nintendo pinball games do. Also, even if the tables are too simple in terms of game design, that doesn't mean they aren't visually appealing. The unique themes they carry are presented well, and there's a few fun details for players to check out. On that same note, the audio in the game is also a plus. Each of the tables have their own music that matches their themes, plus all of them are fun to listen to while playing. I also love that the game taunts the player with laughs and dialogue while they play. I'm a sucker for horribly compressed voice lines in Super NES games, so that's my personal preference coming into play here. So here's the thing. Super Pinball Behind the Mask is an okay game at best. It's not bad to kill some time with, but it isn't something I load up often. Also, the game has never been re-released, so it can only be found on the Super Nintendo. The way I see it, if you want a pinball game on the SNES, then Super Pinball Behind the Mask isn't the worst choice, so long as you don't pay more than five bucks for it. Its biggest advantage is the locked camera that doesn't zoom around everywhere like other pinball games on the console. However, it comes at the cost of less interesting tables than its SNES rivals. So think about those two things when considering if you want to pick up Super Pinball Behind the Mask. And that's all I've got for you today. I know this is a short one, but I hate stretching out videos to begin with, and I'm definitely not going to do it for a mediocre pinball game on the SNES. So thanks for watching, and until next time, take it easy.